Hi friends, I'm going to focus mainly on uh, real-time interview questions for Azure. I already made a video for part one, which covers Azure Migrate. This particular part is going to cover few more questions. First question is, how do you balance the load on Azure? Explain in detail. This is a quite common uh, asked question in the interviews. So there are two types of load balancers. One is public load balancer. The other one is a private load balancer, which is uh, used within your virtual network. So the picture represents the public load balancer, which is coming to the through the public IP, which is from the outbound traffic. The second one is internal load balancer, which is being covered with internal network within the internal network. So a public load balancer can provide outbound connections for virtual machines inside your virtual network. These connections are accomplished by translating their private IP addresses to public IP addresses. Public load balancers are used to load balance internet traffic to your uh, VMs, right? So this is actually uh, uh, taking the outbound traffic from the public domain and then translating into the private IP. An internal uh, load balancer is used where private IPs are needed at the front end only. Internal load balancers are used to load balance traffic inside your virtual network. There are three types of load balancers to address the various type of traffics coming uh, to your Azure resources. Let us see what are those three type of load balancers Azure provide. So Azure Traffic Manager, Azure Application Gateway, Azure Load Balancer, these are the three different uh, types of load balancers Azure provide to address your various type of uh, traffic. So Azure Traffic Manager is usually used for the cross region load balancing. If you can check out the picture. I have a region one and I have region two with a similar setup. I want to just manage the traffic between these two regions. Then you can use Azure Traffic Manager to configure it. So it works on the DNS uh, resolver and cross region load balancing geo traffic restriction is there with the azure traffic manager coming to the azure application gateway it works on on the layer 7 uh, and it uh, supports http and https that means it can support your urls ips azure vms azure apps as long as you have uh, uh, configured on the http the next one is uh, you can check that here application gateway so within the region I have a few VMs here. It could be your app services or such a kind of main service or it can be your VMs. So you can configure that between your VMs or between your uh, uh, app services. So the next one is Azure Load Balancer. This works at the layer 4 which is network level and supports TCP and UDP. So here uh, this works with VM and uh, cloud services but at the layer so that is about the load balancing so the most important question and the most important thing in the cloud space is HA and DR so that's why this is the most frequently asked question what's your HA and DR strategy first understand what is HA and DR also a few terms related to that HA is high availability keep your applications uh, maximum available it could be 24 by 7. DR, disaster recovery, get your applications and data back after major disaster. When the disaster occurs in that particular region or a zone, you have to make sure that your data is uh, well recovered and you are restoring your services. RPO and RTO are recovery point objective and recovery time objective. Uh, these are the tolerable, tolerable uh, period of time uh, which it can take up uh, the downtime for example if your application is in production so you can sustain maybe 15 minutes downtime or 30 minutes downtime that is a rto so coming to the rpo for example you have configured uh, four hours backup every four hours your servers are backed up but what happens like uh, three hours 59 uh, minutes it's down so whatever the data is uh, taken from various resources in during this three hours 59 minutes that is uh, lost so still your business can sustain with that loss that is a rpo so these both objectives will help you to define uh, your ha and dr strategy so when you when you come to the strategy uh, you have to define 
and uh, identify the applications where you need to enable your HA and DR. Also, you need to see what is the business impact. So, you have to perform business impact analysis. You need to set RPOs and RTOs for those applications. So, coming to the high availability, there are plenty of features uh, from um, Azure availability sets on VM, availability zones on VMs, auto scaling, failover. Within the failover, you have storage failover, Azure site recovery. Uh, Azure site recovery, you can configure your VNet replication and VM replication as part of that. So, levels of H and H A and D R. Uh, there are uh, four levels of H, uh, H and D R. Like uh, you can you can define in your own, but uh, these are the general standard like low, medium, warm standby, hot standby. So when it is low, it can tolerate for a few hours even if it is down and even if uh, the data is lost for a few hours. So in this case, you don't need any fault isolation. Uh, Azure VMs support 99.9% .9 SLA. Coming to the DR, take, up, take backups and restore the complete system when the disaster occurs in that particular location. So, you can take all your backups to your blob storage, maybe to the different region and then you can uh, restore all your systems. But it takes few hours to restore the entire system based on the size of your system. The next one is medium. If it can tolerate uh, from uh, 15 minutes to 1 hour, you can go with this. Uh, fault isolation with the uh, racks and uh, storage. Uh, when you enable availability sets on VMs, that means uh, you, you are taking one VM in one rack space, the other one, other VM is going to be configured in the other rack space so that you know if there is a power outage uh, for this particular rack, still the other VM is running. That's where your SLS will be improved with 99.95%. .95%. So coming to the uh, DR, you can scale resources in the response to a DR event. For example, the incident occurs, then you can scale up your resources. Uh, after the incident. It takes 15 minutes to 1 hour time to restore your entire system. Warm standby, it can tolerate up to maximum 15 minutes in terms of the uh, data recovery and also the uh, downtime. Then in that case, you can uh, enable availability zones with the VM skill set. Uh, availability zones are like uh, uh, for each region, there will be two to three different availability zones. So, you can enable your availability zone so that uh, one of your VM will be in availability zone 1 and then second VM can be in the other availability zone. So, so that if one availability zone is down, then automatically your failover system is there on the other availability zone, which will automatically take the load. That's where you can improve 99.99% uh, uh, SLS. Uh, you can scale resources in the response to DRE event and you can uh, use Azure Site Recovery for this one. So, uh, in this case, it can tolerate up to 15 minutes. So, you, you have time for that to recover your complete system. Hot standby. Uh, so, you don't want to tolerate any downtime for, uh, for your business. Then, in that case, you have to enable multi-site. That means, I will configure my uh, system, enter system in reason 1. The entire system redundancy will be there in the region 2 as well. So, I will take take the failovers uh, to the second region whenever the disaster happens in the one of the region. So, that you, you can, you, you don't have any downtime and you can make use of traffic manager or Azure friend door to uh, move your traffic as per the DR. So, these are the various uh, steps you can, you usually follow. So, please go through more for more information uh, on the Azure site links. Coming to the next question, what is VNet and how do you connect uh, to VNet from your office network? Private cloud is very, very important thing in cloud space. So, when you create your VMs, if they are exposed to your, uh, to the public domain through the public IPs, the security may be less. For example, you have 100 VMs in your system. All 100 VMs are exposed to public IPs. Uh, then your cost also will be high and your uh, security will be less. In that case, you can build your private cloud by using Azure VNet. Uh, Azure VNet is the fundamental building block for your private network in Azure. VNet enables many types of Azure resources such as Azure Virtual Machines to securely communicate with each other 
the internet and the on-premises networks. So, how do you communicate to those particular VNet missions? That is, uh, you have multiple ways, point to site, site to site, express route. I have made one more video, uh, Azure VNet connecting uh, to on-premises. This will help you to understand deeply on this particular topics. So, point to site is if you want to uh, access from two or three missions from your office to your Azure VNet, then you can use point to site. In case if your entire office has to access uh, the Azure, uh, Azure VNet, then site to site will be helpful. Express route is uh, not by going through the public internet. You want to just uh, have a exclusive uh, uh, internet channel, then you can use express route. This is this will be configured uh, with the help of the uh, various carriers uh, suggested by the Azure. That's it for today. Thanks for watching my video.